So on the count of three. And that looks pretty awesome. As you can tell, I'm not the best at this. Look a at magical that. doorknob. <laughs> is that a clean Yeah. Put it in backwards. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm shiny? doing right now. I'm a mess. So who taught you how to spray paint? Mama. Your <laughs> They're <laughs> like all wrong. Dang nab. Going to no return. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh. Welcome back to the Retro Revivals YouTube channel. Last week, we did a video on the painting of our 1973 Holiday Rambler. And I got to admit, it turned out really nice. But if you didn't see last week's video, go ahead and check it out here. <laughs> we've got an appointment to get new tires for the Rambler in the morning. So we've got to get these rims cleaned up. We're going to knock the tires off of the beads get them ground down, get them painted. Well, we'll get primer on them at least. That way, when we get our new tires back, we can get some new paint on them and shine up our hubcaps. You ready? Yup. All right, well, those guys get set up to do the tires. I'll take you on a quick walk around to the camper to show you what some of the projects are that we have planned for this week. We've got the old, I don't know if it's called a rock guard window cover thing or whatever. So we've got to get that painted so it doesn't look out of place and get it back up on the camper. We have a door here that we're going to put on all the running lights, marker lights, all those sorts of things. We're going to hopefully figure out if we can reuse that doorknob. Um, I'll show you in just a second what I've been doing with those maps, but we've got some of the little trim missing that goes over those screws. So we're going to get that painted and replace that. I've got a door handle that we're hoping can work here on the back of the camper for this hatch. Um, to be determined if we'll even keep this as an opening hatch, but um, it'd be nice to have that option if we can get it to work. Obviously, brake lights, more lights up here. And up front, because there's not a lot of storage, um, we have a, like a deck box that we're going to add here. We're going to put a spare tire underneath and, of course, the tires. So in the last video, I said something about, oh, you got paint on the tires. That was actually sarcasm. So the tires that we have there are quite old. We're going to give these a little paint. And then Tyler and Jack are going to get going on getting these off so we can take these old wheels to the tire place tomorrow. These dirty, crusty, stinky 2001 tires are very old and dirty and crusty. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to be getting rid of them. And first, we got to take out the air. So these tires have really held pressure, um, but they're not worth anything because we don't want to go down the road and have a blowout. So Jack's going to take this uh, valve stem removal tool, take the valve stem out of it. Um, you could clip the valve stem if you wanted to, because we're going to, you know, have them replaced anyway. Um, but this is probably the more educational way to do it. So this is what we're going to try. Uh oh, it'll come out all the way. Just keep probably hit me. In Can you smell that? I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> all right, go ahead and take the air out of all of them then. <laughs> I'm going to hit this tire with my two pound maraca and hopefully it'll come off the bead. Yeah. All right, we may nope. need a bigger hammer. Two things. We probably need a bigger hammer. It's probably stuck to the, the bead pretty tight. Um, and I don't have any other tire tools, so that's what I'm going to use. I can't get it. <laughs> Not happening. Not happening. Do you want me to give it a try or do you want to do it again? Go ahead. Right? Yeah, it may not uh, come off of there. Well, hmm. Maybe we give it a stomp. 
What do you think a stomp will do for it? Nothing. <laughs> I doubt it does anything either. I don't have enough stomp in me. Come here and stand on my shoulders. <laughs> yeah, what if we both stomp? Both stomp. Oh boy. Gonna hold the hammer. Yeah. Alright, you ready? No. What do I what? We're gonna <laughs> jump at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to flip the tie. We have to jump at the exact same time. Uh oh. You ready? <laughs> so, on the count of three, I'm going to jump and land on the tire. One, two, three. <laughs> well, that was no. a good attempt, but I didn't even think about moving. Well, since that was a colossal failure. Do you think? What we'll wind up doing is taking the valve stem out. Grinding the, the rim that we can get to, um, putting some primer on that, and I'll just have them knock the tires off of it tomorrow when they put the new ones on. And we should point out, too, that these tires, even though they're a different lug pattern than a normal tire, they're not what's considered a split rim tire. Definitely Wheel, not. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the split rims are definitely hard to work with and hard to get replacements and all those things and can leave you stranded on the side of the road. These do not fall into that category, and our tire place can do it no problem. Here is what we have going on with these holiday vacationer emblems. Um, got them off the camper where Maine and Florida had snapped off. Got those glued back on. I actually put them like in hot water and tried to put some heavy pots and pans and things on them to try to flatten them as much as I could. Didn't want to break them. Um, they look okay. They would be serviceable, but I thought before we put them back on and then they're just on forever, what I did was I made a silicone mold, which if you haven't done this, it's actually pretty easy and pretty fun. In this case, I might not have done the best job possible with the mold, but um, here's how one of our new ones turned out. I use clear epoxy to make it. Um, it definitely needs to be sanded up and cleaned up a little bit. But um, I wish I would have showed you the whole mold process. But basically, you can get this on Amazon, the two-part silicone. And um, what I did was I put the map on some contact paper and sort of stuck it as flat as I could because they were pretty wavy to the bottom of a Tupperware container, this size. Not the best container for doing this because there's a ridge around. It would have been much better if it had a flat bottom. But what I came away with after I poured the silicone on it was a mold where we could make our own new emblems. So this one still has the epoxy in it. It is very hot out today, so it's still it's actually a little pliable. The longer the epoxy has to cure, um, the, the harder it gets, basically. So this one is still a little bendy, um, which before I put it on the camper, I'll let it really cure a little bit longer. But um, you can see it just kind of comes out. So this is epoxy that I got off of Amazon, too. Um, this red silicone I actually just picked up at Michael's down the road because I didn't want to wait for Amazon. I think you pay a little more, but it's it's pretty good. But see how easy it just comes off? Hopefully Florida doesn't come off. But any imperfections that are in your original are going to also be in your copy. So like you can kind of see where I glued and things like that. So I'm going to take the Dremel, do a little work on these, try to get them smooth, try to get out some of those imperfections. And then we're going to wind up painting them. And I say we, probably me, because I like that kind of thing. But um, here's the one that just came out of the mold. And that looks pretty awesome. So you can see like there's some little extra epoxy up here. There's a little bit hanging off Texas here. But um, overall pretty good. There's a glue mark where you can tell I had glue on the original there. But um, overall I had a few bubbles, but not too bad at all. And I think that... I'm going to feel better putting these on the camper rather than the originals. I think that they're going to be more durable. And I also think that if one breaks and falls off, that we can just make another one. So if you have any emblems like this, before you go ahead and slap them back up there, it's easy to make a mold just for backup, a little security. All right, got the Dremel, got the piece. I'm going to see if I can get it cleaned up a little bit.
that right there. I got the edge of this one cleaned up pretty well. I'm going to hit some of the little bubbly areas on the inside. And then, well, then I have to do the other two. But after that, um, we're going to give it a little paint scheme that looks something like this. Um, this is actually the decal that's very similar to the original that will go on the front of the camper there. So instead of these red and blue, when we paint the emblems, we'll use our body color blue and red that you have there on the camper. So it should look pretty sweet. I'm going to get back to work. The old Dremel, very old Dremel, is getting very hot to the touch. So I'm going to let that cool down and I'll do pick that up a little bit more later. But we've got this doorknob. I don't know if you can see, but it's got a number that says 356. Okay, so I went on Amazon. They had two different keys that said 356. This was one of them. Looking at the shape of it and looking at the, this, I'm not hopeful. Like, I feel like it should have a flat top, but we're going to see if this, oh boy, fits even. Oh, it doesn't even fit. Oh, oh, it, oh, 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 no. Oh, let's see. I like it. it's going to make a difference. Okay, well, that is... Decidedly not the right key. No, that's not it. So that's a bummer. Um, oh, well. I don't even know how it's supposed to lock. I guess just the knob itself would have locked because there's nothing sticking out anywhere. Um, the other problem is we're missing a knob here. The handle was broken, so we took it off. And I got another Amazon find handle. <laughs> so let's see if we have better luck with this. So here's the handle. It's got a set screw here. It's not exactly the same as the one that came off, but it's close. But this thing is a shorty. So... Let's see. I can't get it. Like, it wants to push in. Oh. I need it to stay out. That'll be a challenge. <sighs> oh, and the diameter is... So if we took this plate off, bored it out a little wider, I feel like this could go in and be what we need it to be. Yeah, we can do that. Whew. All right. I'll work on that while you go do the wheel thing. All right. Jack knows what it's like to get his pants wrapped up in a wire wheel. Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> Like I said, we're going to knock the scale off of the, the uh, wheel here so we can get it all primered up. Um, it's coming out pretty nice so far. Taking it down to bare metal, 
Um, we still got some work to do on that one there. We're flipping them over and doing the other sides as we go along. So how's it going, Jack? Good. Is it hot? Very. Ah, <sighs> as you can tell, I'm not the best at this. <laughs> Practice makes perfect. Yep. Nice smoky fumes. Uh, yeah, rusty fumes. Good for the lungs. I think you got to go quite a bit more. Will it fit? Oh, it's so close. Oh. A little more. A little more. La more. La more. La more. Oh boy. This drill's hot. It's been working a lot. <laughs> It'll surely fit as now. Hot as me. Surely it'll fit. Surely. No. Oh. Dang now. I was surely wrong. Oi! Yellow. Ooh, I just don't want to go way too big. Hmm. Like that? Oh, if you keep trying until it works. Surely. It fits. Oh, it's my, yes, it fits. It's my set screw. Oh. <laughs> Probably fit that whole time. <laughs> Jeez. All right, buddy boy. You want to see some magic in action? Yes, ma'am. All right, that's tight. So, pretty. Looks good. Looks kind of almost like the original. So watch this little doohickey. Oh, Look a magical that. doorknob. <laughs> okay, it's a pretty standard doorknob, <laughs> but it works. So we'll have to figure out a locking situation. Um, probably just add a lock on the inside that we can lock at night to keep people out. I don't know if we'll add one or try any harder to get that key. Probably stick with this doorknob for now and um, figure it out as we go down the road. <laughs> Oh, that's good. All right. For this little leg of our journey, we're getting a lot of deliveries from Amazon. So Jack's doing a little mail run here and uh, picking up some boxes of things we ordered. And uh, here's our little Hovsko Sync Max e-bike. And the kids have had a blast riding it around the house here. Of course, we took it camping in, in our one video this spring, was it? Um, but this thing has really been fun. Was that all the packages? Two more. Two more? Two more trips? Just two more packages. Oh, boy. Let's see if you can do it. <laughs> Here it comes. It does tackle that hill pretty well. It really does. It's a big box. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Good job. Good work. <laughs> I can't do it. He's trying to do the Superman. Oh, come on. <laughs> Oh, did it work? No. It's, uh, <laughs> uh, 
Rachel. We are going to get right back to working on this Holiday Rambler in a minute. Just wanted to go through what we have here with this bike. It's the Hovsco Sync Max 14-inch folding electric bike. It has great reviews right now. It is actually on sale for $499. We'll put a code in our description of this video. If you use that code, I think you can save a few more bucks. But some of the things we like about this is it's lightweight. So we've taken it on a camping trip in the past. We plan to take it on other trips in the future and it folds up. You can put it right in your camper. Um, you don't have to be some kind of a He-Man or Hercules to get it in and out of there. But it also is big enough to carry kids or adults. So uh, max load is 260 pounds and the actual bike itself only weighs 42. There's a lot of cool features of it that we haven't actually gotten to yet. There's an app that you can use to monitor your speed and some different um, features of the bike. The battery lasts a long time and this thing can really cook. The max speed says 19 miles an hour, but when Jack was riding it and pedaling, he actually got it up way over 19. So you can use it like a regular bike and pedal or you can use the electric bike feature and just sit back and relax and tool around the campground. So if you're interested, check those out at hubsco.com. The link will be in our description. Dude. All right, Jack's getting the wheels wiped down with some uh, brake clean and we are going to get some edge primer on these so we can get them dry and get them to get new tires in the morning. Don't get any paint on the tire. Right. It's got white walls right now. Loves did, white walls. did tires in that era have white walls? Yeah, you can get or white that, walls now. I mean, no, but I mean, like, was that a thing? Like, I know it was popular in the earlier decades before the 70s, oh, right? Oh, yeah. My parents, I think all their cars had white walls. <laughs> but what about in the 70s? Was it not as cool? You no, know, it was still a sign of, I mean, okay, so in the earlier days, they had wider white walls. That was like back probably in the 30s through 50s, and I'm probably saying that wrong, but then they came up with a, a skinnier white wall, but it was still kind of like a higher class. You know, you get your wire wheel rim or wire wheel hubcaps and get some white walls on there. I mean, that was, that was a high class rig. Oh yeah, don't forget we do have hubcaps, so this doesn't have to be perfect. Right. Um, so are we getting white walls or? No, we'll get white letters. Just oh. kidding. We're oh, just... <laughs> I don't. <laughs> well, I, in, in my mind, we'll do uh, black side out, um, which I think we're getting Carlisle tires. And uh, I don't even know that they have a white letter feature. So Do they have a white wall? Definitely not a white wall. Oh, okay. I was going to say, maybe we will, <laughs> but definitely not. So definitely not. we will see you in the morning. All right. No white walls. No white walls. <laughs> All right. We're back out here. Got home from work and uh, Tyler was able to pick up the new tires on the wheels. So those are looking good. We're going to get a coat of paint on them. And one of the things we're trying to decide is do we want to use the hubcap? So I think right now the plan is just paint the wheels black and use the hubcaps. But if that doesn't look good, um, then we'll go with some kind of color. But no sense coloring the wheels and then putting hubcaps over the whole thing. So right. um, we do have some Holiday Rambler hubcaps, so it should be pretty cool. I'll try to get those cleaned up. And um, the Dremel last night completely died. So <laughs> it was like hot to the touch in my hand. It's super old. So we got a new Dremel. And I'm going to get back to work on those emblem things which is taking a long time um it and does everything yeah and we're supposed to leave on a trip in a couple days so we are feeling it there's a lot going on around here with the, the family and and whatnot so we're going to try to get as much done in this video as we can and uh hopefully we don't let you down with the big to-do list that we went through at the beginning <laughs>
he's in pretty good shape. Just gave him a wash. The uh, trim pieces we made for Harvey, we did this similar process before in a previous video. They turned out above average. Yeah. The really execution, good. installing them, probably below average. Well, that looks dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that looks crazy. Okay, just don't zoom in on it anymore. <laughs> so hopefully these turn out okay one of the things i really wanted to make sure was that the silicone residue was off so hopefully between the sanding gave them a good wash um, hopefully the paint will stick to these so we're almost ready for that i just gotta let them dry i got the old brake light covers clean tyler's made some good progress on the tires and wheels yep. and so now we have to turn our attention to a big project which is that front rock guard thing hanging and before we can do that we have to clear off the workbench so yep let's do it watch this work This is the rock guard or stone deflector for the front window. And all we have to do is clean this up, which we're gonna remove this uh, ceiling material, caulk, whatever it is, uh, redo that. Uh, we've got a little repair we've gotta do here. Wind up um, cleaning it and then painting both sides. Better work cut out for us, what do you think? Yeah, then we'll reseal it so these don't jiggle. Perfect. One coat of primer on the old rock stone chip guard. We use some of this uh, kills, um, just a kind of a stain, stain blocker and sealer. And Christy's gonna do the same thing uh, on these fancy new. This is where it's really gonna show the imperfections, I think. Yeah. Whoa, boy, okay, she yeah. comes out fast. That's your favorite kind. You like to hose it on I there. I know, I do, but. <laughs> Whoa, okay. Oh boy, okay. I'm just doing the edges. Right. All right. <laughs> Look at the little, oh yeah. Their little uh, bubble hole. So we can, we'll make sure those either get filled with paint or touch a little caulk in there or something, but I think we'll be all right. Yeah. It looks kind of good, actually. It looks really good. Or it could be the little fish eye. I don't know. We'll see. It looks more like a pinhole. As the opposed bubbles. to... Yeah. It does. Those letters turned out way better than I thought. They really did. Oh, wow. Okay, we're going into business, people. Um, Each set takes 10 hours to produce. <laughs> we charge $30 an hour. Is that with or without paint? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, without, I guess. <laughs> oh, shoot. Now I got the process down now. Right. I just need a better mold that doesn't leave all these bubble marks. Oh, that one's really bubbly. I feel like if I just hit it heavier with this mm, paint. You don't want to do that right <laughs> now. Just fill her up. No, that's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. Here's what we're leaving with tonight. Got a base coat of primer on these bad guys. Right and on. we'll be back out tomorrow. Is this a good look? Oh, that is beautiful. It's giving me like a Klingon. That is how the Klingon lures a mate. Oh, is, it? <laughs> is that a clean huh? Yeah, it looks like a, uh, I don't know. I don't even want to say it. I don't know. We haven't eaten dinner. It's like very dark, 30. Are my ears sticking up too? No, this not is a any good more look. than usual. All right, <laughs> good night. Good night. Back out here again for another night. Jack and I are going to start 
pro flexing all around here. We've got a couple, like Tyler showed you that corner. Um, there's a crack here, but the primer did a pretty good job. There's a little hole here. So um, we're gonna get some basic sealant around there and Tyler's gonna get started trying to do some of the marker lights, brake lights, that kind of thing. Um, we cleaned up the hubcaps and they're looking pretty good. So um, hopefully some point soon we'll get the wheels back on and give those a shot. Yeah. We grabbed a pack of these marker lights. We've got the amber and the red in here. These we just got off of Amazon. And they are LED, right? I think so. I, I mean, think so. I don't know what I ordered, <laughs> but we're, I think they're LED. We're going to go ahead and put all new there. And then for these brake lights, we're going to use the original covers, but we bought some LED bulbs to go in there. So we're going to see if we can get those going. Uh, probably won't be able to wire it all up tonight, but we're going to get done as much as we can. But uh, yeah, it's coming along. We did have a question about the paint choice. And so, um, you know, if you watched our last video, we did end up using house paint instead of automotive. One of the reasons is we just, we have the equipment to do the house paint. Um, we don't have our air compressor hooked up yet. So to do automotive would have been a whole ordeal. And you didn't, you were scared of automotive. So the theory behind the automotive is we wanted something with some gloss to it. We didn't want to do like a matte finish. So we could do a single stage where your, your clear and your uh, base color are mixed together, but it would go on too shiny. It would show all your blemishes, your imperfections. It's got some little dents and dings in it. I'm not going to lie. I feel lie. like shiny would have been good, but. No, not great. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I couldn't have lived with it. So anyway, that's why we went with the house paint. It does have a little bit of sheen to it. We actually picked gloss. It doesn't, to me, look like gloss, but, um, you know, we had done some research, looked on some different RV renovation sites. A lot of people were doing the house paint and having good long-term results with it. And so, you know, we thought we'd give that a shot. And it's a little bit thicker and it does hide stuff better. So yeah. it's kind of a win-win, hoping that it all holds up over time. And as far as um, deciding to spray it versus roll it, I wanted to talk about that in the last video. Um, we rolled, I, I rolled the blue, we sprayed the white. Um, the finish on the top is definitely more smooth. Like if you're going for a smooth finish and you can get your hands on a sprayer, that's gonna give you a more smooth finish. Um, the taping took forever. The untaping, we time lapse that, but that took, because you have to leave it on when doing multiple colors, you have to leave the tape on for days and days. You can't take it off right away like we usually would prefer to. And so untaping it took a couple hours. So overall, I don't know that this spraying saved any time at all, but um, it's, a, it's a better finish. I like the spray. And it's more fun. Yes. It's more fun to watch him spray than, right. than me roll. Right. So, so there, there's the paint story and uh, we're going to get back to work. Right. Another new day and we've got a lot of work planned for the Rambler. I have the day off of work and unfortunately Christy's at work. So I've got a replacement helper here. Yeah. So we've got a lot of projects we want to get done. I'm going to get Jack started on the marker lights and then I'll show you what I'm going to do. We've got to take out this little plastic grommet right there in order to get those new LED lights flush up there where they go. All you have to do is poke the wires through and then uh, take your hex head screws, screw them in. The existing holes should line up pretty well where they are. We'll come back after the fact and put some ProFlex over the top of those just to kind of seal out the water from running down in there. So, do you have any questions? Nope. Perfect. All right, let's get cracking. Booyah.
There you go. Oh, that sounded good. Perfect. All right, this guy's an expert already. Jack's got all the screws in on the lights in the back. Let me take you inside real quick and I'll show you what the uh, what we did on the inside. Where we ran the wires through on the inside, I just used some electrical tape to insulate that little metal edge there. Um, that should be good enough. I mean, the wires uh, aren't really pressed up too hard against that, but I just didn't want them to chafe on that metal edge. And then we put in our wood blocks. So all in all, it turned out pretty good. We've got all the lights mounted. The lenses are not on, and you can see that green wire hanging down inside. That's the power wire for the lights. So we'll wire those up in a little bit, but in the meantime, I've got Jack on another task. There's not an abundance of usable storage inside besides what the cabinets we're going to be putting in and maybe some things under the bed or whatnot. But we wanted some like tool storage, some extra uh, parts, pieces, whatever we might need. So we went ahead and got a toolbox. That toolbox is going to go on the tongue of the trailer. So Jack, if you'll do the honors, let's see what this bad boy looks like. Ooh. Ah, <laughs> oh wow, man. Uh, first things first, break the key off in the lock. I don't like it shiny. I mean, I wish it was more of a satin finish. Um, I guess we will wait and see what Christy thinks. <laughs> We've got one more item of business to take care of, and that is our spare tire carrier. We talked about putting it on the rear bumper. We talked about possibly putting it on the tongue of the trailer. I think we have a solution. I'm hoping this is the ticket. This is the retract to spare spare tire carrier. This is a telescoping uh, mount that slides in between your frame rails. You can do an undermount with those bolt holes, or you could actually do uh, in between. Well, it's stuck. Well, now. Gosh. <laughs> Why didn't I see this earlier? Oh. 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 <laughs> Why? Dang oh, that. Seriously. All right. Oh, look. I didn't mess up the packaging too much. <laughs> This is ungood. So, if I was to draw a line across there, I'd be closer to six than I was to seven. Six inches off the ground. And we're not even at our right height. That definitely is not gonna work. You remember that box I tore up? Yeah. I think you're gonna have to get the tape out. <laughs> I feel like we may be stuck with that rear bumper mount if we want to carry a spare tire with us. Why don't we just put it in the excursion? Hmm. Huh. It's not the worst idea in the world. All right. What do you have there? We got new LED light bulbs. They're gonna replace the old incandescent ones. Good, Big good. word for me. Big word. Can you spell it? No. Okay, <laughs> neither could I. Anyway, what is uh, what do you have to pay attention to when you're putting in these light these bulbs? These two little nubs. They're nubs. different heights. Yeah. Yes. This further one is higher up, so you use the higher okay. as to the lower. All right. And they are... Uh, oh. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kadoki. And we'll see if I can push it in there without breaking it. Or there you go. Oh, no, that's not it. Oh, I put it in backwards. <laughs> Oops. Oops, that's never gonna work. I, I, okay. I said pay attention to the stubs and I didn't. <laughs> oh. 
Got to get it? Yeah. Okay. Just like Jack said. One for two. <laughs> He's an expert. Ooh. Am I? <laughs> um. Oh, come on, it's so close. It's come on, you're gonna break it. You want me to do it? No. Well, don't break it. They cost yes. a, They cost a hundred dollars a piece. No, they don't. No, they don't. Five hundred, actually. Oh, five hundred. <laughs> oh, boy. Dad strength. Well, I searched and searched, and a 09176 Monroe shock doesn't look like it exists anymore. Maybe it's a discontinued number. Uh, hopefully, they use the new part number that I ordered to replace it with. We will find out tomorrow. That's when it should be here. And uh, in the meantime, I'm going to keep cleaning on the frame and the, uh, the brake drums here, and uh, we'll go from there. Christy's return to the fold. Yeah, it's Saturday morning. Um... It's nice that Tyler and Jack could get out here yesterday and do some work while I was at work. Um, we still have a lot to do today. The goal is by the end of the day, have this baby ready to roll out and take camping. No. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but, bring uh, your sleeping bag. But anyway, if we could get the tires on and get the exterior looking good, that would be a great step forward. Yeah, sounds good. We're going to do a little bit of divide and conquer today. So Jack's going to start over here. What do you have going on, bud? I'm going to knock the scale off of this, and then I'm going to hopefully take the shocks off. Oh boy. All right. Well, good luck, and hopefully there's no living creatures in that little mud dauber's nest. What is that? What are those things called? A woolly bear? No. I don't know. Caterpillar deal, maybe. Cutting wheel. And they can really pack it in there, can't they? Yeah. Oh, look at him go. Oh, don't. Hercules, don't. come on, buddy. He can do it. <laughs> I can't do it. You can do it. You can do it. Oh, it's right it there. Well, the other oh, option so would be hot. to cut the stud with the cutoff wheel. I'll do that. <laughs> All right. Oh boy. <laughs> You're almost there. Almost there. All right. Ah! Yay! <laughs> Yay. Now, yeah, put your foot right on that hot bolt that you just. <laughs> that would be lava. permanently ingrained into your hey dude. Oh. On to number two. Well, Jack's working over there. I'm gonna get a coat of paint on that. That's just primer right now for that rock guard. And then Tyler's gonna start going to town on this toolbox. I think the color looks perfectly fine. Amazing. <laughs> it wasn't the color, it was the finish. Well, it's beautiful. Okay, good. Maybe there will even be space right here where we can put that like tube to hold the dump hose or something. Use that little space. That's a good idea up my paint mark yeah. first and this is why we can't have nice things it's the bottom of a toolbox i don't know why <laughs> <laughs> i don't even know what shiny? i'm doing right now all right you're cleaning up your paint mark yeah i don't know why is my point oh well because it looked like a puddle well it was a puddle but oh now look i marred the finish oh no uh you're probably going to peel the black right off of that. I know. Gosh, I... it's looking worse and worse. <laughs> a little cushion. All right. Perfect. All right, let's do it. This is going to come in so handy. We'll show you in just a second, but you know the normal trailer 
stabilizing jacks. We can't really do those here. I mean, we could, but we'd probably be clunking them into the ground constantly. Um, those jack stands are actually a little taller than what our tires are when they're on. So we bought some temporary ones you can just put in when you get there and crank up, but then we don't have anywhere to store them. So those will go in here. And speaking of ground clearance, um, Tyler was explaining the issue with the spare tire, and I think we're going to end up just storing it in the excursion or the tow vehicle. I think mm -hmm. that was Jack's idea. It was. And then I said, I mean, it's a travel trailer. We could keep it under the bed or under the couch or something. So I think we're not going to worry about the spare. We could do the back bumper if we didn't care about losing that storage. But for now, we're going to hopefully still use that back storage. So we're just using self-tappers to put these in. They're uh, pretty heavy, so we're just going in, uh, through the box into the frame. Should hold on tight. How's it going here? Good. I got the nuts off. Now I just got to take the shock off. Oh boy. Are you going to be able to get it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I really feel like you have it in you. Oh. Okay. That's a good one. Uh, Don't break our uh, new fender thing. Oh, oh this one's this one's not getting as close. No. I did grip on pretty tight, so it bent the metal right here. I don't know if that has to do oh, with any of it. But. Weird. I can't do it. <sighs> I don't know. <sighs> I think I might have to cut this one too. I think you just like to use that cutoff wheel. Yeah, it's pretty fun. <laughs> You're getting pretty handy, bud. I'm starting to learn things. That's right, he can be taught. Yippee! Hey, hey! Success. No more old dose. All right. So now, what's next? You know, uh, we're just gonna. I gotta knock the scale off of this and hit this with the grindstone. Grindstone, eh? All right. There she is. She ain't going nowhere. We just took some spare foam that we had and um, cut it to fit the bottom of this, so our doodads and whatnots don't um go bouncing around as we go down the road oh look at you wow there we go i didn't even know you could do that yeah it was a little short but we won't look too close <laughs> but then these feet okay so these are the stabilizer jacks that we got and there's four of them and they're jammered in this box but, I did that uh, when I put them back. What in the heck? Oh, uh, there we go. So four of these bad lads, and um, they'll just go under each corner, crank them up with those, and give us some stability. <laughs> I'm a mess. <laughs> <laughs> put them back in the box so they won't bang up our new metal compartment, nice. and they should travel just like that. Beaut. Good job. Thanks. So who taught you how to spray paint? Mama. Your mom. Yes. Oh, man. Okay. You're doing it exactly like she would. Yep. No. She'd probably hold it on there a couple seconds longer. <laughs> Bussin. Wow. Brand new. Good job, buddy. No. All right. Um, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> I'm squeezing this stinking tube of Proflex. I'm like, oh, it's coming. It's almost. And then I turned it around and the stinking whole side blew out. So we're just going to um, dip the screws and then use them that way. It's perfect. I'm glad this happened. <laughs> All right. So. 
All right, so <laughs> I got the exploded Pro Flex. I got my lights and my screws. We're gonna dip these screws in the Pro Flex, put them in the hole. So hopefully, if water runs down the side, it doesn't get in the screw holes and rot all the wood. Perfect. <laughs> so Christy's going to clear some access for our new stainless door that's going to go here. Um, it's a little bit bigger than our current hole, so she's going to take the old zing zing and give it a haircut. Zing zing. This Death is nerve wracking. Do I don't it? know. I feel like I have to like hold it weird. Oh. You're getting close. That's good. Oh, oh. it's not true? <laughs> no. Dang it. Okay, here we go. I'm scared. Oh, that, that's fine. That's fine. It'll be covered. We have an inch and a half overhang. Yeah. So that'll be covered. We're good. Ding! All right. I think I'm going to do the other one from the inside. Okay. I don't know why. Just so I can get it real tight up to that board that's in there. Sure. Wait, I might have a wood thing on here. Wood and plastic. All right, pause. <laughs> Clear near the right through the floor. All right, so we do have to cut up this okay. menagerie of All right. craziness. What Get should I use for it. that? What tool would you prefer? Uh, none of them. To be honest. <laughs> I might go back with the multi tool, but whatever. The multi tool. <laughs> crazy. There we go. I think we're ready to try to fit this door in there. These screws that we put in are going to be in the way, so we'll move those. Butled up, ready to go.
Okay, door's looking good. Things are coming along. Tyler's still wiring. We're gonna go in and get some lunch and we'll see you in a bit. We are about to the moment where you'll either see a grown man cry or celebrate like <laughs> a crazy person. Let's go with cry. <laughs> so Tyler's been wiring and wiring and wiring and we're about to see if it works, I think. All right, fingers so, crossed. You're ready to cry. Hey! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! I didn't think what there was did a they difference. Do to us? Oh! Oh! Oh no! <laughs> They're like all wrong. Oh! Okay, this I will say is not your fault. Thank all you. All the ones before were always just white lights. And, and it the was lenses. the covers. Yeah. yeah, the lenses. Oh my gosh. Hey, hey. Well, you got four <laughs> out of five on the back. Hey. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad. We were going to ProFlex those up there right before we went in for lunch. I'm so glad we didn't. So can I weep oh. instead of cry? Babe, you can do whatever. Good you news. Want. Hey, I mean, this is overall good news. I want to, oh, the license oh, plate here. one. Yeah, I, oh. can, I can put that in. Well, let's see. Oh, let's see. It goes there. Yeah. Wild. Oh. Boom. Oh, a little it, flicker. Little connection. There probably. we go. So that gets a little. So, okay, cover. do they all work? They're just stinking wrong. Every other one. Oh, my gosh. What a devastating moment. <laughs> it is pretty devastating, really. Oh. What if we just keep them the way they are and put the right lenses or the right covers on? I mean, do you want to <laughs> see what that looks like? No, I do. Oh my oh, god. Oh no, that's the wrong oh, one. Jeez. Well, I can't tell the difference. No, that is red. That's red? Yeah. That's red. Oh shoot. Yeah, that was red. So that oh, does not shoot. help me. Oh. Oh. Dang nab. Dang nab. Hey guys, I wanted to let you know we got some new merch on the website. We got these awesome curly bob dang nab stickers and cool dang nab hats go check us out at retro revivals and thank you very much well we will um start sorting some things out <laughs> eventually okay nothing like being in the home stretch of a project and something goes all right why aren't they on oh oh yeah plug them in. okay well wait I'm getting ready to put this decal on and honestly couldn't be more excited or terrified because I don't want to wreck it, you know? There's a lot of uh, terrified excitement going on here. There is. Ho, ho, ho. You put all the orange ones up front? Babe. Don't. Fool me once. Shame on. Shame on you. It fool me. We can't get fooled again. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, orange right. is, are the, is the orange up front. On orange is the new color. I tried to mark them. I did get all the little trim pieces over the screws. Um, I wound up just bopping them on with a. <gasps> it's beautiful. I wound up having to <laughs> tink them on with a mallet, but it is beautiful. Oh. I kind of wish we didn't have to put the covers over the brake lights, but we probably should. All right. Okay. Yeah, well, we'll call this a win for tonight. For me. For you. Ordered this baby off Etsy. Um, I think what it said is peel half of this backing off, squeeze it down, peel the other half off. Should be easy. Okay. Did it say anything about wetting the backside of it with Windex or? It did not. No. It did not. But okay. So. Good luck to um, you, ma'am. But the, look at how bubbly this front is. That's what's freaking me out. Like, we've had this out here for like a month. And, okay, why don't I start with this side? Right. I'm feeling like the heat of the barn may have done something. I don't know. It has done something to me. Yeah. Okay. So far, so good. Okay. Things are happening. Okay. Now it says a cut. Oh, oh. 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 Oh, oh. Okay. Oh, I think the mosquitoes are out. That's mm. good. Okay. Okay. 
on a no return. Right. Is it level? Oh, Is it straight? Oh, sh I don't know. Oops. It was. Okay. So, okay. Ready? Yeah. Keep my... No going back. Oh, I think the mosquitoes are biting my earlobes. I think you're losing focus on what's really important right oh. now. Well, that's probably accurate. I have... Oh, this bubbly pop. I hope doesn't mess um, me up. What? What? Nothing. Oh. Jeez. Okay, you said um like, like um that couldn't be more crooked if you tried. Um, I didn't. Is it looking good from your vantage? So far, so good. Yeah, you, there you go. Well, that obviously this peels off. Okay, the All right. checkered bit. Oh, peels off. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Ready for side two? <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh, wait, no, don't peel it that way. What a dangus. Okay. Uh, <laughs> right. I got this. I put screen protectors on my phone, so I should be a pro at this, don't you think? <laughs> yeah. Your little three by four square or whatever it is. No, but Definitely. do you remember doing those decals on our pontoon boat? Yeah. I we redid. Okay, I think I pre okay. it. We redid a boat a few years back yeah and well i know you know <laughs> um we had these huge decals that was terrifying yeah there may have been. you know honestly i can't tell if this is going down smooth because this top layer is so crinkled yeah i feel like i'm crinkling the bottom layer but i don't know if that's true oh, you know what i mean right I mean, if Maine and Florida pop off, that'll match the other ones. Right. So it could be worse. Florida. Here we go. Oh, here we go. Uh -huh. Okay. I feel like there's no way to know until I take this off. Right. There's probably no way to know. All right. Ready? Yeah. As long as the whole thing doesn't peel off. Okay. Okay. Don't get too excited. Don't jinx us. I'm just. Booyah. That looks so good. Rub it with my dirty right, hands. Right. That's a good idea. Oh my gosh. Oh wait, I brought this pencil in my hair for a reason. I had a couple little <laughs> marks here. Uh-huh. Clean those up. Wow. So the judges don't look at it. ding us. Okay, ding wait, us. let me step back. <laughs> ding us. All right, step back here. Step back here. Oh, oh. my gosh. Oh. That looks amazing. It does. It's a sticker. Oh. But you did a good job. Thank you. I'm glad Not you a did. single bubble. I'm glad you didn't panic. I did panic. I have seen panic in a man's <laughs> day. Final unveiling. We'll pull the tape off and we'll get it mounted up. That sigh means you're very thrilled to have received a package. Yes, so the shocks came in. They were delivered just a little bit ago. All I gotta do is put our little bushings on here. One uh, set on either end. 
and compress them and hopefully they just pop right into place. Now, what's the worst that could happen at this point? They don't fit. Ugh. Oh, well. <laughs> Do they not fit? They are a titch long, but all I have to do in theory would be shorten my stud, uh, maybe on either end. Um, I, I can make it work though. Okay. Um, my main concern was going to be how big around this barrel was because it was really close to the frame rail there. That looks like that's not going to be an issue. So I will uh, do some adjusting and uh, we'll get back to it. Welcome to what may be the most controversial part of this project until we get to the inside. Hmm. Tyler wants a urinal. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, we're going to put one of these more modern looking grab bar things on here. And the reason is A, they're nice and convenient. And B, because this door with this lock, we don't necessarily trust. Plus we can't lock it. So it just has to latch and it opens in a direction that if it caught a little wind, this thing is going to just slam open as we drive down the road. So with this on there, I don't know, we'll show you in a second once it's installed, but it can turn and ultimately help keep the door closed as we drive. So two part deal. Um, it doesn't match the look but sometimes you need modern conveniences. Yeah, they weren't thinking about this 50 years ago. No, so here we go. Amazon. Okay. All right, so these things just slide like that. Okay, break it into place. You break it, you buy it. Okay. That will be nice when you go to get in and out. Right. I mean, we're not getting any younger. Truly. Well, After today, I feel a lot older. I know. So it's almost time to call it quits for the night, but we wanted to do a couple more things before we headed inside. I did get the wheels back on. Um, it's still on jack stands. We'll get that off in the morning, put the hubcaps on it and roll it out. But just in case you were wondering, I was unable to get these shocks to work for now. Um, they're a little bit too long. So we'll get that taken care of, sorted out. I do have to get back in here and check the bearings and everything. So don't think that I'm leaving this the way that it is. I've got more work to do there, but we just wanted to get it ready to be pulled out of the barn. The last thing that we're going to do tonight is a new porch light. And we bought that stuff from the 1971 Holiday Rambler, and it came with this light. Apparently these are expensive and rare and hard to find. Um, our camper doesn't have an outlet up by the door. So I don't know what the, sorry, <laughs> with the 73s, maybe they switched to something else because this doesn't really seem to be without a whole bunch of changes, a good option. So we're not going to use this on this camper, but we did get a backup. We got this outdoor light and this is kind of the style. It did have this glass jar in there. We didn't love the idea of glass traveling down the road. Um, even with this cage, it just made us nervous. So I went online and bought this plastic bulb that kind of looks decent in there. And here we hold one of these things. <laughs> what it is, is one of these LED flame bulbs. So the good news is it should be easy to put up there. The bad news is we don't have the wiring done yet. So we can't fire this baby up tonight unless we rig something crazy. I don't know. Let's just go with we're not going to fire it up tonight. Um, but we are going to install it. And then um, that's probably the last thing for tonight. I've got the emblems inside. Ella wanted to paint those with me. And she's been at the zoo all day. So that's awesome for her. She went with her cousins. But um, we'll have to do that when she gets home. So let's get this light up. And then... In the morning, we're going to roll this baby outside 
give a walk around and show all the changes and what it looks like now in the exterior. All right, we got the light in. It's looking pretty good. Um, we're going to head in for the night, but tomorrow we're going to hit it hard. Come back out here and give you guys the grand reveal. <laughs> good night, everybody. All right, see you guys. All right, guys, here it is. This was a ton of work. We didn't actually expect it to be this much work. We thought this was gonna be a quick video in and out, just wrap up some loose ends on the exterior, but we think it turned out amazing. And um, we put a message out there about the hubcaps. And so far, I don't think anyone has voted for no hubcaps. So we're gonna end up going with the hubcap look. It looks pretty awesome and yeah. initially, vintage. Yeah. Initially, I thought, Maybe we'll leave them off. It looks kind of cool. As soon as we put them up there, definitely yeah. an improvement. Makes a huge difference. So all these little things just help the exterior come together. Happy-ish with how these turned out. I mean, when you're this far away, they look kind of rough, but you get a couple feet away, they look perfect and yeah. way better than what was on there before. So I would do a couple things different if I was going to do them again, but um, you know, it is what it is. The filming of this video took a long time. We actually, our, our last video that we put out of going on vacation was in the middle of this work. So things are a little out of order, but um, we're excited now to get started on the interior. We've got some big plans for in there. There's a lot of ideas that we're gonna to try to implement in there, really bring it all together, and hopefully it lives up to the uh, outside expectations. Right? Yeah exterior expectations. That's <laughs> right. So if you've enjoyed this video, go back and check out some of our other videos. Watch them all. That would be great. Yeah, um, share them, like them. Yeah, comment. subscribe, <laughs> comments. Hey, we pay attention to the comments. We uh, we did with Harvey and we're doing with the Rambler. We like you guys' opinions and a uh, little bit of input here and there with some, uh, you know, some history. We don't know everything about these campers and we like uh, learning new stuff as we go along. So anyway, thanks for joining us. Uh, hope you enjoyed it again and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye.